Hello everybody and welcome back to another exciting and informational video on My Beat Goes On. As always, my name is Chris and I'll be your host today. And today we are at answering one of the most thought of, if not asked questions when somebody is diagnosed with congestive heart failure. And that is, how long can I survive with this disease? If you look on Google, you're going to find probably pretty grim answers, stuff that you don't want to hear when you're just starting your battle to live longer and healthier life. So we're going to go through this. We're going to put some things into perspective. And hopefully at the end of this, you'll feel a lot better about your diagnosis, or at least your survival with this diagnosis. If you look on Google and you look up survival rates, you're going to see probably one of the first things that pops up is from the CDC saying that those diagnosed with say, stage C or D heart failure have a survival rate around 50% of those diagnosed will live to the five-year mark and only 10 to 15% live to after 10 years. And even with that seemingly low survival rate, that still means that people have a long life to live. There's people that do live that long. So the first thing you should be thinking is, you know, I can be that person. Don't let these numbers get in the way. These are I don't know if they're necessarily outdated, but they don't necessarily, I think, take in all the factors that people think about and that doctors have these days. So really, how reliable are these statistics? You have to ask yourself, and what is the reality of survival rates? Now, the first thing you have to know is you are not a statistic. And no matter how long you live, you can fight every day to extend the quality and quantity of your life. So don't think that even if you have five years, you can't fight. You may have way more than five years. You may only have a week. I mean, we're not, we're not labeled with an expiration date. So it's silly to sit there and think that you actually have one of those. So don't worry about that. Uh, survival rates have many variabilities. Uh, most of them you can actually control. It may not necessarily help, but at least you can work on them and you know try to control how long you live and the quality of life you have. And then, as always, I'm preaching that there's new medications, new technology, new research, and over time that's going to increase these statistics. And some of these statistics are based off of just some trial groups and certain people they follow. So there's always that variability of how many people they followed and if those people actually did what they're supposed to and did everything they could to live a longer life. So in the end, it's not worth stressing about something that you may not be able to control at all. So you always keep your options open to different surgeries and medications. Uh, these things are designed to help you live longer and a better life. So just make sure you keep your options open and keep in contact with your doctor and just you know let them ask them and let them tell you about different things that they have that they can do for you. And of course, this isn't a straightforward topic as you're trying to probably realize. Uh, when you look at statistics, it's right here, here's your numbers, that's what it is. When you look at an individual person, those numbers go out the window and it is no longer straightforward, it is an individual basis. And of course, we have members in our congestive heart failure support group that have been living with this condition for 30 plus years. So if they can live that long, you can come join us. There will be a link in the description. Um, ask these people what they've done and how they've done it. A lot of people are more than willing to share their success stories and how long they've lived with this disease. And for me personally, knock on wood, I'm on year four of my diagnosis and I feel like I'm nowhere near the end. So... You know, that five-year number is, I'm kicking that out the window, and that 10-year number I'm not even going to think about because I am definitely planning on beating that. And then I said there are some controllable variables, and these are things you can do to control how long you live, hopefully. Uh, it's not always 100% guarantee, but it's some of the things you can definitely do that will help you. Uh, first one is medication compliance. Make sure you take your medicine that's prescribed when it's prescribed. Uh, attend all your doctor's appointments, that way they can keep tabs on your progression and all that with your condition and prescribe you new things or take away things you don't need anymore. Uh, actively participating in your care, which you're doing right now by listening to this. Um, 
part of that's the next one is the research everybody wants to research their condition you need to research it learn about it so when you go into the doctors and they're talking about stuff you know what they're talking about and you can help them guide the decisions for your best care exercise of of course is always a big thing Um, if you're not allowed to then obviously don't do it but if you have permission and clearance to exercise make sure you're doing that as much as they allow you Uh, diet slash weight loss you want to change your nutrition to something heart healthy something that's going to help control you know some of the um, problems that can come with heart failure like edema blood pressure stuff like that and of course losing weight that's never a bad thing whether you got a heart problem or not Uh, reduce your stress you know stress releases cortisol which is a hormone that does bad things in your body you don't want that so the best you can reduce your stress and obviously not worrying about that five year ten year timeline is one good way to immediately just not stress about that and controlling comorbidities um if you have diabetes high blood pressure high cholesterol and all that good stuff make sure you get that under control if you have those under control it's going to help you in the long run obviously with those and with your heart failure some of the uncontrollable variables is your age you know as you get older your body indefinitely and will get weaker you know it's just a fact of growing old so sometimes you can't help with that um how you acquired heart failure you can't change that and sometimes that can be a a factor on how long you live Uh, physician error you know somebody like me who had their first heart attack at 31 the doctors didn't look at heart conditions for me and i don't no, if you can technically call that an error that would be counted but to me that's an error because they didn't even look at that for me and i eventually had a heart attack which probably could have been prevented and then the last one on the uncontrollables is your genetics you know if your genetics say that your heart's going to poop out on you well there's probably not too much you can do about that so some of the takeaways on this i know it's kind of a short episode but there's really not too much to say because it's so it's so um not controlled and not specific like statistics say is that you don't have an expiration date none of us do none of us ever will i guess unless you're on death row which hopefully you're not going to plan on being on that but other than that we don't have an expiration date um you can control what you can and don't stress about what you can't control life's going to happen things are going to happen Just roll with the punches and enjoy every day you have. Find yourself a support group so that you're not alone, whether it's online or in person, maybe both. Find some family members to talk to. This doesn't mean people you don't know. It can be people you do know. So just find somebody to support you because this is going to help you mentally. And the mental part of this is just as big as the physical. Actively participate in your care. It's very important that you research, understand what's going on, know your medicine, and know everything about what you're doing so that you can live your best life and the longest life possible. And of course, always research, research, research. The biggest thing people don't do is they have a condition that could potentially end their life early and they don't research it at all. Research the ever-living end of this and understand every single aspect of it. Ask questions, get the answers you want, and figure out exactly what you need to do to live your longest, best life. And finally, some questions to ask your doctor. Um, I personally would not ask about life expectancy. Chances are they're either going to tell you the statistics I just told you, or they're going to say flat out they don't know, and it's up to you on what you do, on how long you can live. Something like that, it's basically not even worth asking. You can if you want to, but... Don't expect the best answer because they're probably not going to give you one. How I can prevent my condition from declining. It's important to know what you need to do to keep yourself from going backwards. What have you seen work best for others with CHF to maximize quality and length of life? So it's always good if the doctors have somebody who's had issues with CHF and they've reversed them, managed them very well. Find out what they've told the doctors what they're doing, and maybe you'll be able to do it. And then the last one is, what are some of the worst things I can do with my condition? You know, we all want to know the best things to do, but sometimes it's good to know what should I absolutely avoid and not do 
because that's just as important, and sometimes we don't think of those. So ask them what's the worst things you can do. I mean, they're probably going to be honest with you on that. They might give you some basic stuff, and you might need to research it a little bit further, but it's always a good thing to know what's the worst thing you can do for yourself. So I apologize that this isn't necessarily maybe giving you the exact answers you wanted, but it's the truth. I'm not going to sit here and BS you. Um, it's just how this condition is. It's unpredictable, and a lot of it's up to you. And some of it's just up to your body, and you can't control it. So it is what it is. Don't stress about it. Uh, if you liked this episode and you thought that there was some value to this, it gave you some good information and answered some of your questions, hit that like button. This will help you to promote this uh, video and this channel to other people, especially those looking for questions on heart failure. We all know how scary it is before we find those answers, so if you can do that and help these other people out, that would be really appreciated by me personally and I'm sure by them. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. Um, this will let you know when the latest and newest videos come up. I've got a whole bunch planned, so you don't want to miss any of those. And drop a comment if you have any questions on this video or if you have anything that you want me to discuss in the future. I'll be compiling a list, and then the most popular ones will just go in order, and we'll do episodes on each of those. Make sure you hit up our website, uh, www.mybeatgoeson.org. Uh, everything will be in the description, so you don't have to worry about writing it down. But do that. Check out our Facebook group if you're not already there. And until next time, keep on smiling and take care of yourself.